Good afternoon. And I think we're live. Yes, we are. Thanks for joining me. Um, my daily Facebook Live that will be coming on YouTube, so you know where it will be in either place. A uh, quick introduction before we get started. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion and guardian of the Divine Feminine. Adding that in because my friends keep calling me that. Oh, dear. So today's talk, um, actually, before I get to that, let me say that my, day, my talk every day, overarching title, is Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 384. So getting close to the 400 mark, as I keep saying lately, because it's getting closer all the time. And today's topic um, was inspired, of course, um, by a friend's post, who's a relationship coach as well. And I'll get to that in a moment. So the title to the topic today, because since my area of expertise is in relationships, and if you know me, you know I'm single. So I'm going to speak about this as neutral as I can, but I may actually lean to one side in my explanation. So the title today is, Should a Relationship Coach Be Single or Married? And is that all? And I'll get to what that, that is in a moment. So let's start with the main heading, shall we, which is Relationship Coach, Single or, or Married? There are some assumptions, there are some assumptions out there. Um, and I know because I've, I've had some conversations with people who've told me these things. That a relationship coach would be better if they were married than if they were single. Because it somehow proves that they're good at what they're doing. I understand that point. And in fact, there are people who trust relationship coaches because they're married without any other criteria. That's what the, is that all about? You know, that, that title. And the truth is that everybody has expertise around relationships. Some like this, some like this, and, and so on. So the context of what sort of person you should be seeking out to get help from should be based upon a few criteria, which I'll get to in a moment. But before I get to that, the reason why this, this talk was inspired from my friend's post, she was talking about how a friend of hers who's a relationship coach is going through a divorce at the moment. And I'm like, that makes it interesting, as other people commenting on the post about, does that make them any less qualified or more qualified to be a coach if the marriage they were in failed? Somebody I know, somebody I know quite well who's very well known in the, in the industry of relationship conversations um, wrote, a, wrote a game-changing book that's a bestseller and of course it goes with it, for people to find the one they want. And then when she got divorced, smart lady that she is, not immediately, but shortly after, wrote a book about how to separate consciously and caringly. So she actually went, wins on both sides of the conversation in a way. But my point I want to make about this is that some people make automatic assumptions about a coach based upon their marital status. I like to offer that there might be a error, an error in approach. So let me get to some of the criteria you might be looking for. And this is not going to be a sales pitch, unless it is, but it's going to speak to some things I know and things I'm still working on and may be added to what you need to learn and want to, des want to learn and desire how to be better in your own relationship experience. So that lets you know that I might talk about myself. <laughs> so being a married or single relationship coach isn't the only thing that makes you good at what you do. In fact, in some cases, it doesn't make you good at all. There are people out there who are single, who are relationship coaches, who frankly should get a day job. I'm being very simple. I'm being very clear about that. And that's why this is going to be kind of a rant and a edu an, an explainer. Um, there are also people who are relationship coaches who are married, who shouldn't quit their day job. And it's like because your marital status, having a marital status of either one, doesn't qualify you to be an expert in relationships. If you've been divorced 17 times, that doesn't qualify you either. So using that as a barometer for your choice of relationship coach, personally I feel is an error in approach. That looking for someone to help you find the love of your life sounds great to, have you, have, to be using somebody who found the love of their life until it turns out the love of their life abuses them and they got divorced. Happens. So I suggest you make some notes of what sort of things you're looking for and what sort of things you need help with. And that's probably a better way of putting it. For your own... Um, enlightenment and inspiration to attract the love you want. First of all, is it better if you go with somebody of the same gender or the opposite gender? Let me put that one on the table. Because for some people out there, having somebody of the same gender gives them something to confide in, it feels like, but it may not be true, 
but doesn't necessarily give you the experience of the other side of the conversation. If you're a straight person, this is, this is contextual about straight couple versus gay. But if you are seeking help about the opposite gender, wouldn't it be good to meet somebody of the opposite gender to help you with that? That's one reason I work with women. Um, I could work with men, but they don't want to listen to me. <laughs> I'm being transparent here. Another piece of the puzzle is what is their relationship history like? Because it can play into the conversation. If their relationship um, experience was dysfunctional, is that good or bad? If their relationship experience was peaceful and everything was loving and everyone and, and the and the getting to relationship, getting out of relationship was all very easy, is that good or bad? These are questions you should ask yourself. But what I want to speak to more, maybe more emphatically or more importantly is, would it be better if you work with somebody who's been studying this arena for more than a few years? Just a suggestion. Because there are people out there who market themselves as relationship experts and some have been on summits, I've been on, so I've watched them and seen some of their work. And what I can hear them say, they are a few years short of really being experts in this area. They're just starting out with no expertise and maybe they got over their shyness and began on, went on dates and now they're an expert. Not effective. And maybe in 10 years, yes. But, well, I'm going to say this. Let me express my resume in a slightly different way to show you that someone who's done the work can help you. Now, I'm not trying to, I'm not intentionally, well, or I am intentionally, I'm not wanting to over promote myself, but I'm intentionally sharing about what I do and why, I'm, why I do what I do. First of all, it's nice to find out what that person, that coach's why is. Why do they want to help you? Are they driven by a purpose and a vision that is bigger than themselves to make money off of helping you? Are they driven by uh, more than just a desire to be nice to you? Are they driven by a need, a desire to really go deep with you because they care about your heart? They care about your um, life because it's valuable to you and to them too. Is it important if they are... Um, oh, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I had about three things show up in my face. I'm like, mm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Maybe not. Let me try and let me go on another approach on that one. So, um, what if? Let me, no, no, no. Let me do, back up a second. Hold on a second. I'm rewiring inside, rewinding inside. What's well, another thing? <laughs> um, does the person you work, want to work with, the relationship coach, have a connection to spirit for themselves? Do they listen, tap into that place that knows more than they do? Do they show humility in the work they do? And do they share that they are? basically getting insights that are coming through them from you, perhaps, than stuff they're reading from a book. Because that's a massive shift for some people to speak from. Um, another piece of the puzzle, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to give you insights without telling too much about my own journey because I don't want to just sell myself to you in this, in this place. Um, have they had any life experience? There are plenty of coaches out there now who are in their 20s who've got certified, licensed as a coach, they went through one of the coaching institutes and they're choosing a relationship because it's the one that's easy for them to get into because they don't have a background and make lots of money or have been working on the fitness circuit, if that's two examples of other choices. So, I don't know, for me, someone who's 25 years old isn't the most experienced person who can help me about my relationship goals. I would not, I mean, one rare occasion maybe, but generally speaking, no, just to be honest. At the same time, Someone who has um, been in a career for 25 years that is nothing to do with interpersonal relationships is missing some of the key components too. Hey, Steve, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, so these are quite these are things I would suggest you add to your list of criteria of what you would want in somebody who would help you in your relationship. Now. If they've got a book out, yes, I have a book out. That can help, but that doesn't mean anything, to be honest. I'm being, I'm being totally transparent here. I still have hard time sometimes looking at my book and going, I wrote this, even though it's out and it's published, because the book is really what I talk about all the time. So to suddenly have a book and make myself, make myself more elevated seems like a joke to me. So I don't take it that seriously, just to be honest. At the same time, I've been studying interpersonal relationships and being on the path of personal growth, etc., for over 30, almost 35 years. So I kind of have some study and learning under my belt and some experiences. 
And that doesn't make me the expert, but it makes me somebody who I can, I believe can give you some more insights that maybe you don't have yourself. So that was my self-promotion piece. Other criteria I recommend that you might want to look into when you're looking for coaches is someone who basically takes care of themselves beyond the area of relationship. See, the thing about relationships are it's not, on, it's not an isolated thing. It's also involved in life. Um, I've got, a, I've got a, um, a life diagram I created with the 12 spokes of a, of a wheel, which includes relationship. It also includes health, wellness, um, family dynamics, social interactions, um, spiritual practices, all these different things that are also involved. So would you, wouldn't it be nice if your coach, hey, Bonnie, nice to see you here too. Thank you for showing, sh- saying hi. Wouldn't it be useful to meet somebody who has um, not so much, not so much um, excellence in, but they're putting effort into improving their health, maybe the spiritual connection if that's important to you, maybe their social in, um, um, interactions, um, making changes in the world, standing up for something important. Those could be good things to have as qualities too. Because there are many, 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 many relationship coaches amongst the field of coaches in general. And so finding the right one, I'm suggesting you do your own homework. You do some vetting. Um, I personally, in, in, and I do in all my broadcasts, you've seen that if you've watched any of my broadcasts for the last couple of years, well, last year or so, is I very often, in fact, especially the last six months or so, offer a complimentary clarity conversation, a discovery session with me. That is something that any coach that you want to work with should give you a free introduction so you get to see who they are and find out if you want to work with them. If, you don't do, if they don't have that, I will walk away, just to be honest. Now, some coaches have changed that, and they offer a fee-based consultation. That's up to you to decide if you want that or not. I personally feel that it's worth investing the time without the money to see if I want to work with this person. I, as a coach, I would also invest the time with a prospective client to make sure I want to work with them too. It's a two-way street. So these are different things I'm offering as ideas to help you get some clarity and some insights as to what might be the things you'd look for when you're looking to find someone to help you in your area of relationship, to grow in that relationship. Now, I'm talking mostly for single people here because if you're in a relationship, it might narrow the specifics more clearly. Maybe you want someone who's a therapist, who brings other gifts gifts to the table that help you in the throes and challenges you have in a relationship. Now, my book includes stuff about that, but that's not my focus. I work with single people. That's my primary um, focus, use the same word again. So I think you get from my, what I'm saying here that due diligence is a smart move with any coach you work with. It's health, relationships, money, business, whatever it is. If you just go by the resume or by the pretty picture, you may be um, impulse buying. Ooh, there's a good one. And if you're going to work with a coach, especially working with a deep coach that works with you for three or four months or six months or a year, that's not an impulse buy you want to spend, you want to do lightly. You want to look at it clearly, find out more about the person and make the right choice. So having said all that, is there one more thing? Hang on a second. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of feeling into if there's more coming because it does do this. Um, and by the way, the, this is my 384th Facebook Live in a row. That doesn't qualify, my, qualify me either, unless you find value in what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just to be honest. I don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm pitching myself, even though I am telling, talking about myself in this process. Um, but I'll make sure that you seek out the right sort of help that you want, that fits what you are about, where you are, where you want to go. Because I was talking to somebody today, a perspective client, who thinks that investing with me financially is expensive. Now, I know for a fact my fees are not top of the range. They're middle of the road. So I know they're not expensive in that sense. But what I'm really getting clearly is that she doesn't value her future relationship and her heart's work enough to warrant investing. And that's a powerful lesson for all of you, by the way. This doesn't matter what area you're working in. If it's business or health or money or relationships, any of those, if you're not willing to invest with a coach, no matter what the price range is, how much value you're putting into that area of yourself? Are you really feeling that it's worth investing? I know for me, when it comes to areas of health, I've been on the edge of it working with some, with some people sometimes. I mean, I take care of myself anyway. But I know if I get to a place where I had a real serious concern to work with, how much would that be worth to me to invest with somebody who knows what they're talking about to get me healthy? And yet we don't invest that when it comes to relationships. 
and just go on another dating app and swipe and hopefully somebody shows up. Working with somebody who knows what they're talking about, ideally, in the area of relationships to help you get where you want to go, that will change your life because relationships, if you, in case you haven't noticed, affect every area of your life. If you're in a bad relationship, it's going to upset you, it's going to, fit, it's going to, work, it's going to disrupt your health. If you're in a bad relationship, it may affect your career as well. So getting your relationship oriented well, finding a healthy relationship, being aligned with your own heart, and being a happy single even, is a priority if you want the rest of your life to work well. So this is not something you just say, well, I might do something about that. Yes, you can meet somebody through a dating app. It costs you nothing. The, the odds of that working out well, you can roll the dice. But that's a 17,000-sided dice. So the odds that come up the right way up is rare. That was an interesting thing that just came through. Okay. So having said all that, I think at a point I'm, I'm invested in this conversation. And again, 384 broadcasts. I've got some investment under my belt. So I'm hoping that you get some value from this talk, as I hope you get value from all of my talks. Now, this one will give you some food for thought, some inspiration, some ideas that may give you insights about where you want to put your time, your energy, and your money to help you get what you want in your area of love and relationships. As I mentioned earlier, as I'm going to mention it now, if you want to find out more how I can help you, I do have a free gift, which is my discovery session. You can sign up on my website, which is barryselby.com. That's my name. And Let's Chat is the first item on the navigation uh, menu. Click on that and sign up and get it, and we can talk from there. 30 minutes of my time to you as my gift. This, oh, <laughs> if you haven't watched my broadcast before, I usually give homework. So homework tonight. There we go. If you're single, how valuable is it? This is your homework assignment, by the way. How valuable is it for you to have an amazing relationship? If you're in relationship, how valuable is it, in, how valuable is it to you to make that relationship amazing? There's your homework. So single or couple, that's your choice. I think you can do everything I need. So this is, by the way, my 384th broadcast that I've mentioned a few times. This and all my other broadcasts will be on YouTube later on as well. Well, they are on YouTube set for this one. Also on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. YouTube channel is my name, Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And also on my website, again, barryselby.com, where you can find my book, my coaching, and my online program for women to attract the man they want. There's also a place called Video Blog, where these will live as well. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond later. If there's anybody you, should, you know who should watch this, please share it with them. Maybe it'll change their life. Maybe not, but maybe it will. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other topic, number 385. And uh, have a good evening. I'll talk to you soon.